there and welcome to the cafe. I'm Corey and I've been really excited lately about nature inspired artwork. I've got another exhibit coming up in April that I'm going to be getting ready for. So I wanted to pop in real quick and talk about this book, The New Naturalists Inside the Homes of Creative Collectors and uh, just kind of show you some of the stuff that I've put together that I love to use in my nature inspired art. Now, you know, we all hit a wall every now and then. We hit a creative wall. And I hit one recently where I just was having the hardest time. Um, figured out which direction to go and what was really exciting me. I wasn't feeling very excited about much of anything. And so um, it happens, it happens to all of us. But I got through it and I came out the other side and something I always do when I hit a creative wall like that is I start looking online and I start making trips to the library and I make trips into nature and and I shake myself loose with inspiration by being inspired. Um, I'll go take some photographs, I'll go on a quick little photo field trip, or whatever. A simple hike can jar me out of that creative roadblock that I sometimes find myself in. And, you know, ever since I was a little kid, and you can probably relate to this completely, um, I've always picked stuff, stuff up off the ground and um, brought it home and put it places and I have things that I have collected over the years from when I was just a kid so it's really funny I've got I'm gonna go over some stuff with you but I've got a couple feathers that I came across recently and uh, it's so reminds me of my mom because she used to always say, don't pick those up. Those birds carry diseases. So do I listen? No. Should I listen? Probably, but I don't. I pick them up and then I just keep my hands away from my face until I can get home and wash them. But I've never been able to resist the beauty of something like this. I've never been able to resist picking things like that up. So we'll go over some of my favorite stuff, but I wanted to show you this book and some of the neat things in here. So of course I don't like everything in the book, but I like a lot of it. Now this one has a lot of seashells and different kinds of uh, nature inspired things uh, from the ocean. So this is a very seashelly kind of spread right here. And then there's a stuffed bird in a dress. I'm not really into that. I think it's cute, but I also think it's like, it's just not for me. But there's so much in here that just go into the library and picking up a book that attracts you and that has a lot of images in it. Here is this gorgeous uh, seashell light fixture with the, it's got all the beautiful, I can't remember what that's called back there. I wanna say coral, but I'm not sure that's right. This over here is some coral and that's coral. And this is some kind of a sea plant. Oh, I I can't remember what that's called. You know what I mean. But here's a close up of the cluster of seashells. And just picking something like this up can really just spur inspiration and give me ideas. Look at these little shadow boxes with full of all these seashells. I love that idea. My mom was really big into having sea, or, um, shadow boxes and she put a lot of old like dollhouse stuff in it and little tiny little trinket cutesy things that she was attracted to and um this idea 
uh, it, it's, it's a reminder for me. I haven't seen shadow boxes in a while until I picked up this book and it really made me think of my mom, which is a total jumping off place. Um, you know, every little thing can just spur so many ideas in us. Now look at all of this. This is all these beautiful stones and crystals and different spheres and little bone sculptures, all different kinds of seashells. And then over here is more um, ammonites and stones and then down here I'm really attracted to this image here all of these stone beads I uh, love to go to the gem shows every year and I talk about that quite a bit here on my channel and um, being able to pick different stones every year that um, I can use in my artwork and in my jewelry is such an idea that I'm so attracted to. And I really do prefer, I got a question recently if with my wire wrapped crystals, if I drilled the holes myself, I am far too lazy for that. Just to let you know, I like to buy beads that already have the holes drilled in them. And I like to make it easy on myself, but that doesn't mean that I won't wire wrap stuff. And I will show you some examples of that in a few minutes. Uh, I just don't, I'm not attracted at all to the idea of drilling my own holes. I don't want to take the time to do it. So now here is some more. This is attractive to me because of all the darkness. There's a lot of different stones here, and I know it's kind of hard to see, but um, you get the idea of just being able to pick out sources of inspiration that get your creative life flowing as it should be. Uh, I don't hit creative blocks all the time, but when I do, it's actually painful for me, and I'm sure you can relate to that. So here's this beautiful sculpture, this nature sculpture of this angel with the wings, really big and beautiful. And then here's an African bust sculpture and just all different kinds of unique little curiosities going on in this room here. It's kind of hard to figure it. There we go. <laughs> it's hard to figure out which is the next one. But I wanted to go over a few of these things because I think it helps so much just to get some different ideas. Now, what I love the most about this is all the light and then all the white walls and window frames just give such a beautiful backdrop to the beautiful browns and earth tones. All the colors of all of these little nature pieces here, the wood carvings and seashells, it goes on and on. But I love to have like that solid bright backdrop just to showcase, like look at the beautiful wood of this chair and this beautiful sculpture up here against that solid white backdrop. I. I'm just really attracted to that. I think it's a beautiful look. There's a few more in here I want to show you. And then we'll go over some of my materials that I'm really attracted to. So this geode here is gigantic and gorgeous. And with it being in the window and the beautiful ocean behind it, it just has all of this. I love this about geodes and I have some sitting here. I have some different ones like this one. And then having this light center on this with all of that light flowing through and having all the light flow through this rusty orange color in this geode is so attractive to me. I'm really attracted to well-lit rooms. And I, I live in the forest, so my house is kind of dark. And so maybe that's why I'm so attracted to this because I don't necessarily have this, but uh, I just think it's so beautiful to have all of that light shining in. And then this little um, built-in cabinet showcasing all of these green, 
stones and this glass vase. I just think it's so beautiful. And when I get, give myself the time to just sit down and look at a book like this and look at some images that attract me, I can really shake myself loose and you know, I need that. I don't know about you. I'm willing to bet that you have some of the same issues because, you know, things happen and we get stuck sometimes. I keep hitting that shell over there and it keeps rattling. So now th these are these butterfly cases up here. And I've always felt really weird about these. I've you know, I think they're beautiful, but I, I only think they're beautiful if you could pick the butterfly up that's already passed away and put it in there. I've just always felt very funky about that. So I'm not necessarily attracted to real butterfly specimens in cases, but I am very attracted to this shelf and all of these beautiful specimens of rock and seashell that's on here. And then just the branch hanging on the wall. And these little, let me bring you in. There's these really cute, like little branch people in these little shadow boxes up here. And that idea to me is, I don't want to do exactly that, but I love to use branches and sticks in my artwork. So this, it, it spurs the inspiration, of course. Now look at these plants up here with this beautiful, with the light hitting the glass vases and the water inside the vases. That to me is really lovely and the shadows that it creates on the wall. Just little things like this can really help me to uh, shake free of that lethargy that sometimes takes us over. So look at all these beautiful little seashells and sea stones. They, I can't go out and get this because I'm in the mountains. I can get pine cones all day long. I can get twigs. I can get aspen leaves. I can get a lot of different kinds of leaves and a lot of different kinds of feathers. So I'm lucky in that regard. And I really do believe that no matter where you live, you're going to find things that are completely magical and beautiful to use in your artwork. Look at these seed pods. So I am in love with these seed pods and I wish I could get my hands on some of these. So I'm going to be on the lookout for these. And of course, some of the items that we want to use, we have to buy. And not everything, like I was just saying, can be picked up off the ground depending on your area. I wish I had these growing where I live. And I just think they're amazing. The closed look of the seed pod with the dark gray housing and it might be kind of brownish too uh, is so beautiful and then it, when it's split open with like the little pomegranate seed pods in there it's so hard to see there we go sorry about the camera shake these little honeycomb pomegranate style uh, little seed pods on the inside. I am so attracted to these. I would love to come across them and be able to use them in my work. They are beautiful. So a couple more pages here that I wanted to show you. This is such a great little workshop page here. This person's got all of their beautiful things underneath their workbench table and then they've got let me get rid of that neon green they've got these uh, gorgeous bones and twigs and just all different kinds of materials and these big photographs for inspiration i'm really attracted to this uh, image here. And you know, a lot of what attracts me, there's a couple things because I like to pinpoint what attracts me so that I can make these things show up in my artwork. 
uh, one of the things is the contrast, the contrast of the white against this uh, honey colored brown wall and the contrast of the metal against all the baskets and the uh, botanicals and twigs and everything down here. I am so into contrast. And then I'm also really into shadows and highlights. The way this piece, ha the way the shadows fall and the way the light is brightening the other areas, those things, I like to pay special close attention to that kind of stuff because that is the essence of what attracts me. And if I can capture that essence in my work, I feel like I've been successful with my artwork. So, you know, it's a fun exercise to get something like this. Here's this big uh, solid light, well-lit background backdrop for all of these beautiful Beautiful pieces here but to be able to kind of pinpoint hey why am I attracted to this what exactly is it that attracts me to this this room or this scene or this image or whatever the case may be um, you know it just helps me it helps really advance me as an artist to be able to pin that down I can't even get my own pages here. <laughs> Okay, so now look at this. Here's this gorgeous image of, it's it's very hard to see, but it looks like it's Jesus on the cross back here. And it's a really dark, dark backdrop, which I'm not so much concerned with the subject matter of the picture, but I'm more concerned when in this image of the contrast and the light and the shadow. Look at how the sun is coming in and hitting the these branches and this candle and all the things on the table and then how how bright that becomes because of this dark uh, painting and this dark wall behind it that's those are the kinds of things I like to ask myself when I'm going through work like this just to pinpoint what it is that I love and I'm very into collage and I'm getting more and more, I've done a lot of it and I'm going back to it again, more three dimensional, like assembly style artwork because you can get the highlights and the shadows when you make three dimensional art in a way that you can't get it when you're uh, just using paint or a flat surface, you know what I mean? So now look at this beautiful honeycomb and then there's a feather sticking out of it. And just to have uh, the idea of bringing the outside inside attracts me mightily. I, I am so in love with this. And then look, this person took this branch and they hung some things off of it and they hung this little bird cage off of this branch on this little table here and i'm just so attracted to that and then this old beat up chipped apart hammered wood uh, furnishings are really I'm really attracted to that too but this honeycomb is just lovely and I mean the sky is the limit it's so fun to be able to uh, jar myself loose because I really have struggled lately now look at this neat idea here's all these antique old books and then this person has used feathers and an antler. I'm not sure how they managed that. I'm sure they attached it to something. But the feathers being used for bookmarks, what a brilliant little idea and what a jumping off place. And then look at this explosion of botanicals and plant life coming off of this skull. And then they've got the animal skin back here. Some things I'm not attracted to. Some things kind of upset me more than they attract me. And that's okay. It's just a matter of sifting through what we like and what we don't. And then just the way the light is hitting everything here. So 
I don't know, I like to ask myself these weird little questions and I'm a bit different and I'm sure if you're an artist, you can relate. You see the world in a way that others around you consider maybe really weird and, and um, strange. And I really like to think of being weird as an attraction to advanced ideas. <laughs> That's just the way I like to view it. And I love weird people. I love weird artwork. I love to look at all different kinds of ideas, whether I'm attracted to it or not. I still want to look at it because it expands my imagination and it helps me to grow as a human being. Like, look at this entryway. I find this image so very cool because it's framed with the entryway into this room and the light spilling into the image from this room because it's contained in the room and then all of this is in kind of shadow is um, to me it's just really beautiful to see that and then to have this shawl draped over kind of like adding to the mystery of when you walk into this room the expectation is created of this uh, this nature wonderland of light and then the darkness of the shawl and the shadowing of the shawl just even adds more to the mystique for me and then the bicycle here in the corner is makes me think of, okay, I can hop on my bike and ride out in the field across the road from my house and pick all different kinds of magical, natural stuff to put in my home. So it's just fun for me. Uh, we lost one of our little dogs about six weeks ago, and it's been very hard on me. So uh, she was such a little darling, and her name was Gracie, but she lived a very long life. So she was older and she got sick. And so it was very peaceful passing. I was able to take her to the vet and hold her through the whole thing. And that is my wish to be able to do that. But it really has, um, impacted me so so much in my life and I've stepped away from my channel I've stepped away from everything and I've allowed myself time to grieve and I've allowed myself time to kind of fall apart a little bit you know and I'm trying not to cry as I talk but I'm having a little bit of a hard time as you can tell but what a gift I was so blessed and so lucky to have that little dog. I had her for 11 years and we rescued her off the street. My guy, Greg, literally rescued her off the street. And so we got 11 years, glorious years with her. And I just feel so blessed to have that. Now this image here is part of that same last image that I just showed you. And the peach, the walls in this home are peach. And here is the homeowner here and the artist. Uh, her name is Maggie Coker. Berlin, Germany is where this is. And um, the peach is beautiful. Such a beautiful backdrop for this natural little setting that this woman has created. And it, it just goes to show, you know, I love that stark white, well-lit background because of the contrast, but look at all of the contrast you can get from the peach as well. So playing with color is another inspiration that comes out of this book for me very much light and shadow very much contrast and very much color the beads these wood beads with all the peach tones are very very attractive to me so it was funny because I was feeling down and kind of in an artistic rut and I went to the library oh, this is my favorite page of the whole book and it's because of all the light it's because of all the light and and all of the dried botanicals in it. Sorry, I keep telling myself to take those neon green page 
placeholders off so that you're not distracted and I keep forgetting. But uh, look at the gorgeousness of this page here. And you know, going to the library for me is something I do regularly. I love to listen to books on tape. I don't like commercials, so when I'm driving, I like to listen to books on tape so that I don't have to hear all the junk. You know what I mean? And so I'm constantly in the library getting those. And every time I go, I like to hit up the art area, the home decor areas, the magazine areas, and just get some inspiration and be able to give myself a different point of view and a different perspective. So again, this book is The New Naturalists Inside the Homes of Creative Collectors. And then it's got the beautiful uh, cyanotype prints on the cover, which are just lovely. I want to do a lot more eco dyeing this upcoming summer. So I'm very excited about that. Now let's delve into some of these wonderful little uh, nature inspired art supplies that we can use. So now these do not grow in my area. This was actually in all of these little things here. Now, aside from these flowers, this dried flower came from a bouquet I had gotten a long time ago, but all the rest of these, let me pull you in a little. It's this constant back and forth dance. These are like these little wood pieces, but they have like a sponge pattern, a sea sponge pattern in them. They're beautiful and they're flat enough that I can poke a hole in this and they're, they're soft enough that I can poke a hole in it and use it. And then here's some kind of crazy seed pod and then these beautiful flat little pieces of botanical. These all came from, let me move these aside so I can show you. They came from a potpourri bag that I found when I was out Christmas shopping for presents this year. And look, there's all different kinds of beautiful little things in here. There's leaves, there's all different kinds of materials to make nature inspired artwork with. And it goes on and on. So those seed pods that I showed you in the book that I'm so attracted to, that's something that um, I, I could look for in a some kind of a decorative pack like this. And their Hobby Lobby and Michaels and all those places that you go to your craft stores and your home decor stores, uh, be on the lookout because you can find some absolutely stunning packs of uh, potpourri and home decor kits. And just because it's a potpourri kit, it just means you get a bunch of materials to work with that smell really, really good, right? Oh my goodness, I love it. So now here, another thing, tea bags. So I constantly, I dr I'm a huge tea drinker. I love tea. So I've always got this uh, pile of, of tea bags that need to be done and the pile of tea bags that have been done. So tea bags are another favorite nature inspired art supply for me. And look, I've got tea herbs everywhere. Now these are, I decorate, I've got to back you up again. I decorate my home with, I love these metal vases. I actually dusted this just a week ago and it already needs it. Oh, I apologize for not having that done. But I got these at an auction, these vases. I love metal and wood together. I love to mix and blend elements. And I am a huge fan of using twigs and sticks and dried botanicals in my home for my home decor. And as you can see, I need to be a bigger fan of dusting, which these things are really tricky and can be a hot mess when it comes to collecting dust. But here are some of my 
my dried botanical bottles that I've had that I pulled off of my dusty shelf. <laughs> I'm glad I did it though because it just goes to show that I needed the reminder to take care of some of these things in my house. So I got a lot of these antique bottles at auctions. We used to have great auctions where I live and we don't anymore. The This one lady sold her auction and then the people who bought it kind of went online. So I, I love a real organic auction that I can go to and I can touch the stuff and I can bit on it and I can take it with me right then and there. Online auctions are fun, but they they just don't have that same magical quality for me as a live auction. And if you've never been to an auction, I really do invite you to. If you can make one in your area, it is such a an amazing fun experience so I have said that a lot too here on my channel but these bottles I got all of these at an auction and you can just find the most amazing treasures and here in this bottle I just put some really thin little sticks and I, I have stuff like this all around my house and then of course the dried these are the dried botanicals of my area and I, I very carefully go out collecting and I will take some packing paper and a bag and I uh, just a loose like grocery plastic bag and some pa just some nice big pieces of packing paper and I will gently wrap them because of course stuff's gonna fall apart on you and it's gonna shed and do all that stuff and then I just wrap it in the paper and then I'm pretty Pretty good to go till I get home. So now here's some seashells. I love to use seashells in my work and of course I can't go out and uh, grab seashells off the ground because I don't have an ocean by me. So you know I'll just I will buy what I need if I can't find it of course. I love to find the more I can find the better but you know sometimes you want to work with stuff that you can't necessarily go pick up off the ground. So I've liked to wire wrap some of my seashells and there's different ways to handle them. Now I have a couple pieces of artwork I want to show you real quick. I did make a video on this piece of these pieces and so I'll link that below and um, they came out really beautiful and they're, they're a seashell type artwork. Now these are some beads I just picked up at Michael's and these all are pre-drilled like I said. I I will not drill. I just, I, I refuse to do it. There's, there's enough stuff out there that I don't have to, and I can wire wrap too, so I can get around it no matter what. But I love these little tiny seashell pieces to create with. And let me grab those pieces so I don't forget. Here are these two little pieces that I made and I put them on little pieces of driftwood which I had to buy these two because of course they're not in my area. And then um, I go through the whole process of how to make these in that video and I will link that below. And I am a big fan of cutting canvas off of frames and using canvas in my artwork. That's what this is, just a piece of canvas. And then making my own um, hanger for the artwork. So uh, sometimes I find canvases just too confining and uninspiring not always but sometimes I really do and then these ended up with some seashell chunks and little tiny beads in the finish of this and I used some really nice mesh fabric on these and burlap and skeleton leaves there's just all kinds of little magical things in these pieces and then these seashell chunks I glued them on and then I went ahead and stitched them as well so that they would stay in place and I did the same thing with the big seashells and then here I've got some beautiful beadwork and I love to wire wrap crystals and add those to my artwork too. I really like to 
have a bunch of different elements that can just go together and blend together. And that is the magic of doing nature inspired artwork for me, is just seeing things come together in this beautiful blend that, um, you know, it, it, it takes some effort and it takes some doing, but if you keep going until you're happy, um, I always end up happy with a piece. And there will be pieces that start out that I can't stand that I don't like at all and and I keep going and I add another element and I add another layer and I stitch or I paint or I do whatever and uh, it ends up falling together in a magical way so these two pieces I wanted to share with you too on this like nature uh, gathering of nature inspired supplies I love to do my botanicals on top of um, old jelly prints any kind of hand painted papers there's the sky's the limit of what you can attach your botanicals to and I love to use baby's breath and I also, of course, as you know, I love to use leaves. And this here is a scrub oak leaf. And then behind it is a skeleton leaf. And I took this skeleton leaf and tore it in half. And then I attached this part up here and then this part down here so that they would kind of flow together. And then I left this chunk of canvas material out and I stitched all of these together. Together. These papers are Citrusolve papers that I made a very long time ago. And then once I got these, um, I got all of my stuff done on this piece of canvas, I went ahead and stitched it to a piece of canvas material with my sewing machine. I love to do this. And then this set is called Woodland Dream. And I always number them. So this is one of two, this is two of two, just so that I make sure and keep everything straight for myself. And then on these, I wanted to attach sticks, but I was in a hurry for my last exhibit to get all this artwork done, so I didn't have time to do the sticks. So I went ahead and tied it off, and I used artificial sinew for my ties, and I put in little brads with my crocodile, and then I just added some beadwork to add interest to the tops of these. And and I spattered them and you know it goes back I did a bunch of stitching on this I did all black because I wanted that bold graphic look of the black stitching on these and the contrast that it provides to I think it just really provides a nice contrast so but these pieces are a great example all four of these of of continuing to add layers until you're happy and you know a lot of people talk about using colors you're not comfortable with and using supplies that you wouldn't normally use. And I'm for that to a point, but also I'm more for this. I'm more for use what you love and explore what you love because there's so uh, many directions that you can take the things you love. So these are my rusty bits. I use this jar all the time when I'm eco dyeing papers and uh, rusting up papers. And it's just a bunch of gears in an old antique jar. And um, these I love to attach to my artwork. I love to use them to make rusty papers. They have all different kinds of uses. So I'm gonna hurry this along because I do have quite a few things to show you. And I don't want to be here forever, forever. <laughs> Sometimes I get to talking and that's just the way it is, right? So here are some beautiful rose, dried rose petals. And these can be glued into your artwork and attached. They really do kind of need to be glued in order to stay on. Uh, very difficult to stitch something like this, but another beautiful material to use. Now here are these, here are these feathers. There is this park in the city 
that I like to go to every year and I always find a wide array of different feathers there. So um, if you can find feathers in your area, great. Um, be careful, like I said, don't touch your face <laughs> until you can wash your hands. <laughs> oh, it's just funny. But uh, you, you wanna be mindful when you're picking stuff up that you protect your health, of course. So I, I guess I need to say that for sure. And I'm always really respectful to the way I collect. I like to thank the earth, thank the plant, thank the tree, thank whatever I'm doing. And a lot of times I like to leave tobacco too. Sometimes I do forget, but I do like to take tobacco with me and leave a little bit of an offering. So the skeleton leaves, I always search for them, like I say, and I never find them in nature. So I bought these, I bought mine on eBay, and it's just the way it is. Some things you just gotta buy, right? Sometimes you just gotta do it. Beads, 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 beads. Beads are something I absolutely love to use in my work. And this is a nice little mix of bone beads and little metal embellishments, all different kinds of things in this little container here. And it just goes on and on, like back to this with the crystals. I love to do this. I do have a wire wrapping video. It's quite old I haven't seen it in a very long time so um, I will link that below as well but um, I'm not I, I'm pretty sure it's good I mean you'll get the gist of how to wire wrap from it but there's lots of good videos on here for that kind of stuff these are a couple little jars of seashells that I picked up really cute I just like to have stuff like this around my house for inspiration of course too and then Fibers, 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 threads, yarns, lace, all different kinds of trims. And I love to use, this is some batik fabric. These are batik fabric strips. I love to use this kind of stuff in my artwork too. And then sari silk. They, it goes on and on what you can use. The, the possibilities are endless. There is so many wonderful things in the world to use. Here's some ribbon that I got at Goodwill. And I'm always up for a deal. Look at this beautiful rust colored ribbon. I am always looking at Goodwill first because I like to, that, first of all, they have stuff that nobody else is gonna have you know you're not going to get you're not picking a piece of trim off the shelf that where there's a hundred things of the same trim you know what I mean so uh, Goodwill is such a great place as we all know I am singing to the choir let me just show you a few of these really quickly because there is so much inspiration to be had. Now this seashell, I wire wrapped and I did a top and a bottom so that I could attach, my idea was to attach some fibers and tassels to this and put it on a piece of artwork, which I will be sure to use that here on my channel. And then this is a wire wrapped geode. And there's a couple different ways to handle your geodes. You can wire wrap them you can sew them on your artwork. You can just stitch this right on to a piece of uh, canvas or however you want to do it. Here's an ammonite shell that I wire wrapped. I, I picked up a bunch of these at the gem show a couple years ago. And then I love to wire wrap crystals. This one, um, yeah, these are all, I always use the pre-drilled stuff. I really like that. And then these are pre-drilled stone beads that I got at Michael's. They have quite a beautiful selection. Uh, Michael's has a great selection. Hobby Lobby has a great selection. Joann's. Um, as far as stone beads, I'm not sure. Joann's is really up in their game. They've really gotten a lot of nice stuff together. So there's all, I love to lay in bed and wire wrap stuff. This is just a little piece of seashell chunk 
that I wire wrapped up real quick. And then look at these. I showed these when I right when I got them and I am so I put them away and forgot about them and I am so excited to use them. These are big flat beads that are pre-drilled and the, the hole goes that way on these and I am very excited to use these in some art projects coming up soon. And then these are some of my, I love to, this is so funny, my guy, I have, I have buckets of rocks that I have picked up off the ground over the years. And what I love to do with them is here's, here, here they are raw. I just pick up rocks that I think are beautiful and I put them in my pockets and I come to home totally weighed down by all this stuff. And then I throw them in a bucket and then I have another little bucket that I'll put like 10 or 20 of these rocks in and I'll soak them in hot soapy water. And then I scrub each and every one of these with a toothbrush just to make sure I get them completely clean and then I will go ahead and wire wrap them up and make pendants and all different kinds of fun things. This was a piece of, of rose quartz that I got at the jam show. So some things I pick up off the ground and some things I get at the gem show. These little fossilized uh, shells are beautiful. I get these at the gem show. I'm always on the hunt for them. And I, I like the look of these without the wire wrapping so much better, but they are not drilled. So I have to have a way to attach them. And of course you can stitch them on. Here's a rock I picked up off the ground and wire wrapped. And it, it just, this is the kind of stuff that makes me happy. Now here's some beautiful, I'm always on the hunt for feather. I like to collect, if you could tell. <laughs> oh my goodness, I love to collect stuff. But uh, these are feather beads charms, I should say charms, that I have collected over the years. And I get real tiny all the way up to quite big. So there's so much out there to be had. Here's another one of those fossilized little rocks that I wire wrapped. Now these are fun. Oh, this video is gonna be kind of long, but you know what? I think this is worth it. You know, sometimes we just get locked down and we, um, I, I, it happens to me and I'm a pretty garden variety girl. So it has to be happening to other people, right? It, you've had to have experienced this. And I'm sorry to say, if you haven't, you probably will at some point. But um, so it's fun to just go over all these different fun little things. Now these cool little beads I get at, they have them at Hobby Lobby and Michael's both. I've seen them in both places. And uh, the best price was Hobby Lobby. And then of course I did the wire wrapping on these. And you don't have to wire wrap them either. These are all pre-drilled beads. So you can just stitch them right onto your project. That not a, Nothing has to be wire wrapped if you don't want to do it. I will say this, it goes very fast. Once you learn how to wire wrap stuff, you will cruise through it and you will have so many embellishments so fast, it will blow your mind. But uh, now these are just put on pieces of wire that I um, bent loops so that I could attach them to whatever I want. So there's all kinds of little beaded, little charms you can create and I've done a lot of this right here on my channel and the boho beads and all those kinds of things that you can do to add to your artwork you know I love to embellish my artwork with beads and I just think it's an amazing thing to do so let me move that stuff over we're getting down to the last of it now these are some really amazing 
stone beads that I picked up at the gem show. And um, I, I love anything that looks like that's concrete or looks like a dull, boring kind of looking rock. To me, these are not boring at all. They are incredible. I, I look at these and I see ancient times and I see the earth at a time that is not today. And I see people at a time that is not today. I see it, it just really beads like this, natural supplies like what we're talking about today really take me to this um, it, it's almost like time traveling. I'm trying to describe it, but I will say it's just really like time traveling. Now here are, I picked up a bunch of these. I got the brass color and the bright gold color and I got black. So these are those little old fashioned little safety pins. And I'm on the hunt for some old fashioned looking paper clips too. I really want some of the old wire clips. And so if you know where to get some, please by all means, let me know in the comments section below. And also, Turn me on to the natural supplies that you like that I haven't covered today. There is so much amazing stuff out there that, you know, it's, it's impossible to cover absolutely everything. So here's a Tupperware and I've, I want to let you in on a little secret. Once I press my botanicals and my specimens, I, as long as I wait until they are bone dry, I can take them out of the press and I can put them in a Tupperware like this and their colors will not fade for quite some time. I can leave them in these Tupperwares. I've had these flowers. Look at how gorgeous that is. Oh my gosh. And look at these little seed pods. I've had all of these in here for months probably i would say it's december and i've had them in here since spring so let's go may june july august september october november eight months i've had these just floating around loose in this tupperware and they have all kept their color and they've all kept their integrity. So you can do this. You can just go ahead and press a bunch of your specimens and uh, take them out of your press after you've let them sit for, you really do have to let them sit for weeks, 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 just to make sure they're completely dry. Oh no, look at the mess I'm creating. <laughs> um, and then you can take them out and, and then you'll have a Tupperware that you can just keep reaching for instead of having to unscrew your flower press every single time you want a botanical. Look at those little seed pods, aren't they darling? And look at how green they are. They have kept their color. This is just so incredible to me. I love this. Now, I think I bought this, um, I bought some of these at the grocery store, a bouquet of these. And these are sometimes a hot mess because they can fall apart on you, but sometimes they stay together. So it's always worth the gamble to me to, to try different things and just see what happens. And then there's some plants in the bottom of my Tupperware. So you can get away with this very easily. Now, last but not least, there's actually two more things I wanted to talk about. One is paper, and I didn't get paper out other than I've got the tea bag papers, and then I did wanna show you these other papers real quick. This is a big, fat show and tell video, and I love show and tell so much. So these are some dried, uh, flowers here that I've had in my little jar and aren't they lovely and aren't they gorgeous and you can take little petals and you can take little flowers and do different things with them. Now I am not a resin artist. If you like to work with resin, you can keep these 
you know, intact and encase them in resin. I, I won't use resin because of my lungs and my breathing. I have to just be careful. So I would more crush these up and put them in a finish than anything else. That's how I would use something like that. Now, a couple more things, sticks. Oh my gosh, I have so many sticks from just going out into the woods, not sure what's going on there, but um, just going out into the woods and picking up these sticks. And this one has this awesome little hole. So, you know, stitching sticks to canvas or canvas board is something you can do easily. And it's so fun. And then I had some fabric. I started to uh, wrap my sticks. I wanted to do some fabric wrapping and then um, dangle some beads and different things on these. And I just abandoned that because I got busy doing other stuff and forgot all about it. So I'm glad I went through my little box of sticks today because I revisited that. And so now I will be adding those to my upcoming artwork soon here and then of course fabric doilies lace hand dyed fabric here's some hand dyed fabric i made a couple years ago here's some batik fabric that i've had laying around you can just you know sky's the limit on this here's some i coffee stained this fabric here to get rid of the stark white but i also have some chunks of this that i did not coffee stain because i love the stark white as well so there's that there's um, rusty chunks of lace that I did in my rusted fabric video. I'll go ahead and link that one. It's really old as well. I gotta say guys, I've been going through some of my older videos and I realize some of them are very cr cringe worthy and I get that. Uh, so I'm up in my game and I'm changing things around because I want this to be a great fun experience for you. This is gonna be a, quite a long video, but look at all the inspiration. If you needed inspiration today, I really hope that I came through for you and provided some inspiration for you. So here's some more of my rusted fabric that I made. And I'm going to, I want to make more rusted fabrics this upcoming summer. So that's going to be happening. It's December. So I have to wait until I can do all this. Here's a really grungy little piece of lace that was part of my rusty fabric. So sky's the limit. And then um, I want, I did want to show you one more thing. Of course there's burlap. I don't have any of that handy, but this, um, this is cross stitch fabric and I love to buy this stuff and cut it apart. You can paint it, you can dye it, you can leave it white. Um, it's, it's, awesome stuff. I love the grid pattern. And then of course, if you want a more organic grid pattern, you just go ahead and get yourself some cheesecloth and then you can kind of bend it and shape it. Like this fabric here is um, kind of a, uh, it's like this, but it's a thick, it's a, th it's thicker than cheesecloth, but it was this grid pattern fabric and I have some more of it, but just when you go out, be on the lookout for these kinds of things as you're shopping. Sometimes you got to shop in the store. Sometimes you get to shop in the woods. You get it. It's so awesome. So I want to show you these papers real quick and then we're going to wrap this up. These papers here are some of my hand painted papers and I just took cheap little notebook pages and tore them out of the notebook and made some really beautiful hand painted papers with these. I love to blend paper and fabric and beads and you name it, everything we just went over. I'm going to be, this is the direction that I'm gonna be taking on my channel. So I am so glad to get over my hump of just really struggling with inspiration. And I'm so glad to have come out of it with this vision of doing nature inspired art pieces and uh, 
sharing them here with you on my channel. And these little pages, I did go ahead and scan them once they were all dry. And I made, the, I've got some large and some small of all of this same color batch. So I am going to be offering this as a paper kit. And I will go ahead and link this below as well so that if you would like to have access to these papers, you can have access to them. So um, I just hope that if you're feeling blocked at all, that you're not after today. And I'm so glad you stopped by. And we're going to be making some really incredible nature-inspired artwork moving forward. So come on back. And if you haven't, of course, like and subscribe for me. And we will just be exploring all different kinds of inspirational ideas. So thanks again for stopping by and I will see you very soon. Have a great day.